Hi! Hi guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to yet again another video, unless you are new and in that case, welcome. I am Sam and I'm so glad you're here. Really hope you decide to stick around, hit the subscribe button, ding the little bell. Be sure and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't. So let's get right on into today's video. Today's topic is going to be my slowest growing plants, pretty much. I have gathered up some of my plants that just don't like to grow for me. Before we get into this, I do just want to say that there's definitely many factors that come into play whenever we're talking about plant growth, like how well our plants are growing or how fast they're growing, the type of growth that they're putting off, all of that. It really all depends. It depends on the care that they're getting. It depends on the light that they're getting. Uh, it just, it depends on so many factors, like if they're humidity loving plants, if they require higher humidity, they're definitely going to grow slower than they would if they were given optimal living conditions, of course. I feel like that's a given, but some of these plants that I share with you may grow extremely well or fast for you guys watching, but for me personally and the time that I've had them, they just have not been vigorous growers. So let's go ahead and jump right on into my slowest growing houseplants. This plant I want to talk about, and I have two of them here, is Philodendron gloriosum. You can see, these are both pretty juvenile. This is a gloriosum, and I think this is a glorious. That's kind of the conclusion we came to. They both have Gloriosum in them. I've owned two other Gloriosums as well. One of them that I gifted to a friend because I had one. Basically, I've had this one the longest. I've had her for about two and a half years now, I think. Uh, this was an import from Indonesia, I'm pretty sure. This was like my first ever import or one of my first ever imports. It used to be a lot bigger. It had much larger leaves, but I almost killed it several times, okay? And it's had to grow back. And then at one point it was just one leaf at, because I had cut it. Anyways, it's grown back this much so far and it has had spider mites multiple times. So both of these plants seem to be extremely slow growing. So this Gloriosum here, this is the oldest leaf here. It's still hanging on. It's also the only leaf that it still has. And this leaf here, it has been pushing out for at least like three weeks and trying to unfurl, like it's just kind of stuck. I've been misting it with water. I have been keeping up with the watering. It's setting right by my humidifier and still yet it's just taking forever. So the leaf looks perfectly fine. It doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it. It doesn't have any pests. I don't know, it's just taking forever to unfurl this leaf and I've noticed that with all of the leaves that both this one and my Glorious have given me. So the Glorious is quite in a quite similar situation right now. It sets back here by this humidifier and it as well has been working on this, unfurling the same leaf for weeks. It's just crazy. Both of my Gloriosum varieties take absolute forever. I've been misting them. They're getting optimal humidity and they're being watered regularly. So I really don't know what else I can do for these. Uh, hopefully when I get my grow tent and throw them in there, maybe that'll help. I just, I don't know if it's something about Gloriosums that's just, they're just slower growing or if mine just aren't happy with me if I'm just not taking care of them right. But I mean, they're fine. They do fine, but just take forever to push out new leaves and forever to unfurl those new leaves as well. Those are the two that are just bugging the crap out of me because I wait and I want to see those new leaves and it's just like, mm, are you ever going to come out? Next is actually another philodendron. This is philodendron subhastatum. So this is the philodendron that has the elongated leaves and it's supposed to have red on the backs. And I've had this now for a year, maybe a little over a year. I'm not really 100% sure. And it has been the slowest growing thing I've ever had in my life. Like I'm telling you, even just to get it to push out a new leaf, takes forever I don't understand so this one whenever it does start to push out a new leaf it usually unfurls it pretty quickly like this was its last newest leaf here it's very pretty it just takes the longest time to get it to push out now it does look like there's a new leaf trying to come out right here but it's looked like that for a little while so I have no idea y'all mine it's pretty mature I mean it's not a baby or a seedling it's not so why does it not have the red backing I really thought this new leaf 
uh, would at least have a little bit of red on it, but honestly, it doesn't. It's kind of frustrating because that's the whole reason that I bought this plant was because of the red on the back sides. I just think it's so beautiful. Y'all already know I love me a red backed plant, but uh, no, not yet. So hopefully one day, maybe it'll happen, but I don't know guys, it gets good light. It's just, it's not very happy with me. Spit out this tiny little leaf here. I was like, what the heck is that? And then I was excited because this next new leaf was a good size. It's almost the same size as its oldest leaf. So I was like, yay, it's gonna be more mature. It's gonna have red backing. No, it's been a few months, I think now, probably like two months at least since it's put out a new leaf at all. So it is what it is. Philodendron subhastatum is nothing like Philodendron hastatum. That one is definitely a vigorous grower. This one, not at all no idea the next plant is actually a monstera you guys and uh, i haven't showed this plant on my channel actually in quite a long time i don't think this is a monstera peru uh, i was really fascinated with this plant before i owned it i just i thought it was incredible the leaves are so freaking cool i love the bumpiness on them definitely look like a reptile of some sort like a lizard or something it's very very cool looking but this plant has not been happy it when it dries out, you definitely know because it curls all of its leaves and they lose their vibrancy. This one's also really, had gotten really, really leggy and did take a couple cuttings off of it. I took a cut, one cutting and I sent to my friend Sarah and then I had taken another one, I think, before that before or after and i threw it in with a plant that i had sold it's just like a freebie it would not put out a new leaf it was not growing and i was like what the heck is wrong with you well since i cut it you guys it actually just pushed out this gorgeous new leaf here look how beautiful that is so shiny and vibrant and if you look at the older leaves they're just a little bit like chlorotic and i don't know they're just not that cute but this new leaf when i seen that i was like wow like that could make me fall in love with this plant all over again and i love that it pushed out the growth point down here like kind of like midway down the plant midway down the stem rather than up here because so many times when i cut plants with the intentions of them becoming more full and like filling out around the bottom of the pot they just push out a growth point exactly where i cut them at but this one pushed out a growth point right in the middle i'm really happy with it so hopefully me just chopping this plant is going to kick it back into action and get it to actually take off for me now i mean i can be hopeful right but it's beautiful. Uh, definitely have been admiring this new leaf a lot. It's just so, so glossy. I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to push out another leaf. So Y'all let me know down below, do you have a Monstera Peru and what's its growth habit like for you? Does it tend to be a more slow grower or does yours grow just fine? Monstera Peru, it is really, really beautiful when they're healthy and when they're growing well, but the older leaves just aren't nearly as beautiful as the new ones like and whenever the plant just sets so long being stagnant and not giving you any new leaves it kind of makes you like not really love that plant so much anymore and i'll be honest with you i was getting ready to potentially sell this plant or even just give it away because i was so over it until i seen this i seen this and i was like oh nope i'm keeping you now i remember why i got you and why i loved you so much begonia yeah begonia maculata whitey eye now i've had this is my second maculata that i've had i think and i've not really been successful with either of the ones that i had i don't know what it is uh most cane type begonias do pretty well for me but this one and it's just such a shame because this is one that i really was so in love with i thought it was just so beautiful and i still do like i see other people that have really full gorgeous maculatas and i'm like why can't i have that in my life this is one that's just it's not doing anything for me i recently moved it over here behind me well it's been like three months ago probably i got so excited because it started putting out a new leaf and this was it right here and it seemed to push out and open up just fine. There was no like breaking its own neck. There was no crisping. A lot of the times that's what would happen on this when it would push out a new leaf. It would just like snap the leaf off before it could come out and there would be no leaf. So I got really excited about that. It's been like two months at least since it gave me that leaf. And you can see it's a lot smaller than the previous leaves. That's another thing. I've never been able to get these big, beautiful leaves on maculatas. When I do get leaves on them, they're typically really teeny and tiny. And it's just like, mm, and this one doesn't even have hardly any red back. I mean, it does, but it's not as vibrant as all of the other leaves. 
but I am noticing you guys I really am noticing now that I've pulled it out there's a new leaf trying to come in right here um, so that's exciting and then right here there actually is a brand new leaf that did come in and it's teeny tiny so hopefully it gets bigger and then there's more right here there's like two more little baby leaves right there i'm gonna see what happens with those new leaves that's the first sign of new growth that i've seen on it like i said since this leaf came in a couple months ago so i'm gonna just kind of wait patiently and see what happens see if those leaves grow to their full potential or if they end up dying or crisping up and uh, i'm giving it another chance because basically if those leaves fail if the new leaves that are working on coming in now fail and uh, end up dying or something, then I'm probably gonna go ahead and sell this plant or gift it or something to somebody that maybe can make it a little bit happier because it just has not been happy with me. And it's lost all of its other leaves, clearly. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Maculata whitei has just never been a fast grower and never really even been that happy for me personally. So kind of makes me a little bit sad, but it's like that sometimes, you know? So I have one more plant that I wanted to share with y'all. Um, and it is a raffidophora, believe it or not. I know, what? This plant has just been giving me all the anxiety, so I'm definitely gonna have to do some B-roll because he's just way too big to, <laughs> I'm gonna try this, but he's just way too big, y'all. This is raffidophora decursiva. I was so thrilled whenever I got this plant. I got it from NSE Tropicals back when it was really difficult to, to find. I mean, it was just absolutely gorgeous when I took it out of the box. Now, this is what we got. There's the new growth point look how leggy it is and it's under my mars hydro so i know that it's getting enough light like there's no sense in this at all this was the last new leaf it gave me probably about two months ago and it's not even fenestrated it's so frustrating and then it puts off these long long runners there's the new growth point it's taken forever to come out it looks so funky but here on top you can see this was another leaf it gave me, tiny. Now I did cut this plant, I cut it a couple times because it just continues to be leggy and put out small leaves and not do great. But st even still, it just, it's not really helping it any. Super crazy, I don't know. There should not be that much spacing between the nodes. I'm sorry, there shouldn't. But the old leaves are gorgeous, so I think I'm probably just going to cut this back. And I've also noted noticed the Raffidophora decursivas are um, really difficult for me to get to root. Like it takes forever to get any root action on these for some reason. Nothing like their cousin Raffidophora tetrasperma in any form or fashion. I'm really gonna cut it back to this leaf here, chop up these nodes, throw them in a prop bag, I don't know, throw them in as gifts next time I sell plants or send them to friends or something. I'm gonna cut it back to where these leaves are and see if I can get a new growth point to come in and get it to do any better because I'm just over it at this point. I mean, I'm not getting rid of the plant itself. Definitely not because I do love it, but I really, really hope that I can get it to grow right. Like, can you just act right, please? Get your shit together. It's a really cool plant. It's like prehistoric looking uh, to me for some reason. And I love these fenestrated leaves. I love them so much, but I don't love the juvenile leaves and I don't love all of the space in between the leaves that are coming in. And I really don't love how long it takes to get a new leaf on this plant itself. So we will see what happens. I'll keep y'all updated, but I definitely had to include Raffidophora decursiva because I just expected more. Growing Raffidophora tetrasperma, I've had multiple plants of that and um, I still have a couple different ones and both of them, you know, are vigorous growers. and. I just don't get it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. That's pretty much it. Those are definitely the slowest growing houseplants that I currently have in my collection. And I've had them all for a good while too. It's not like I've only had them for a couple months. Most of them I've had for years and or at least a year. And uh, yeah, they just, I can't get them to do anything. So if you have any tips or tricks for any of the plants that I showed you today, please leave them down below. Your girl would greatly appreciate it. I could, I could definitely use it, okay, with these guys. So, but that's it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching this video. I will definitely see y'all again really soon in my next one. Y'all are the best. I love you guys. Bye guys.